Welcome back to the channel. And as you can see on your screens, we did pack Maldini yesterday in the live stream. If you missed that, you can go back and watch it. It was an epic stream, obviously. Huge shout out to Lou and of course OC for letting us get those packs through donations, right? But Maldini, a lot of people are disappointed with him, right? We're going to be showing you the complete build, the best training guide, the best skills to give him, and a couple of talking points about this card as well as to whether or not he's worth spinning for, right? So, Settle in, we're going to have a big deep dive on him, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go. All right, lads, so before you even take to the pitch, right, one of the most important things in eFootball24 at the moment with the current gameplay is your centre-back pairing, right? Whether you're going to have three at the back, whether you're going to have four at the back, whether you're using sub-tactics, and my personal preference after dozens and dozens of hours of gameplay, research, tests, and, and literally trying to find out as much information as I can about it, right, is to pair somebody like Maldini, who is a destroyer, with a more passive center back, right? And I'll show you a couple of gameplay clips and uh, make my point kind of, well, strengthen my point for me, right? Now, you will notice with a lot of destroyers, they will usually have really high stats. I'll get into the full build towards the end of the video, but also they will have a mixture of player skills that will kind of feed into what this card is good at, right? So fighting spirit, man marking, interception, and blocker. A lot of build-up players like Van Dyke, right? They will have extremely high defensive awareness, but they'll have slightly lower aggression and slightly lower acceleration, right? They're not as kind of like dogged in their aggression or their defending, right? Same with the free Bastoni from the Festive Pack. You can usually pair either an extra frontman or a build-up with somebody like a destroyer, right? I don't really recommend at the moment two destroyers, but it does really depend on what you want to go for, right? You could use Tommy Ashu, you can use Araujo, you can use those defensive full back options as well for a more rounded kind of like non-play style centric uh, type of defendant, right? So you'll see a lot of the clips here, right? We only have a few short clips to get the point across, but you will see it's more what Maldini is doing off the ball than what I'm doing on the ball. We're not talking about, you know, last ditch sliding tackles. We're not talking about epic, um, you know, headers or encounters like that because Maldini does have a couple of weaknesses notably his positioning for aerial balls in which seems to be an issue with destroyers which I'll get into in another vid but you can just see there that we actually can see the goal in similar circumstances right? so that's one thing to keep an eye on Maldini right now one of the biggest things as well is if you are using Maldini I recommend using the sub tactic because he's so good on the ball I think that's what kind of sets him apart from other destroyers right now we will have comparisons towards the end of the video as well with his big time and also with the likes of Puyol. We're showing you a comparison here. Tommy Yashu is going to come in as your kind of like left back option here. Carlos is going to shove up and that's going to be a sub tactic that we use, right? Now it depends, a lot of this depends on whether you like to keep the ball, you like to play out wide. There's a lot of variables as to what your d desired play style is going to be. If you're playing very narrow, I would definitely recommend attack with as many attackers as you can. So switch to a three and then obviously go back to a four when you're defending, right? Now, if you take a look at other destroyers in Maldini's class, right? I think what sets Maldini apart is, is two things, right? I don't think he's the best in the air. Even though he's got a similar height to Koulibaly, he's a similar build type player. They're both destroyers. They have similar AI. I don't think Maldini is naturally as good in the air without giving him heading and without giving him a couple of other bits and pieces in his stats that do take away from his card. Compared to Koulibaly, who's a bit like slower on the ball, a bit clumsy, doesn't get rid of the ball a lot of the times. Um, I think what sets Maldini apart, lads, is he's a bit of a classy center back. So if you play a lot of possession and if you're comfortable on the ball, you're comfortable taking that extra dribble instead of just, you know, sweaty kind of like triangles or meta kind of one-touch passes or keeping it narrow, which is very effective and, you know, takes a lot of skill in its own right. I do think that Maldini is kind of like a ball playing center back. Even his default build, which you are seeing here on the screen when you compare him to Koulibaly. Now look, if you're, uh, if you're able to dominate an opponent, right, and you're better than that opponent, you've got a better squad than him and you have him on the ropes, right, any center back can give you the edge. Any center back can play it out from the back. You can be very comfortable. A lot of people go 1-0 up, 2-0 up, and then they start to turn on the style, right? But a lot of center backs and defensive players, such as right backs or left backs, right, unless you're launching attacks with them, such as Carlos down the flanks or something like that, or you're carrying the ball forward with somebody that's a little bit more comfortable, comfortable in possession like Maldini, I do feel that Maldini... Like, he's slightly disappointing because of his levels, right? Now, we're going to show you a comparison here. Um, I would recommend give him heading, and I would also recommend give him one-touch pass as default on his player skills, okay? 
but we're going to show you two builds here or a build of him here and we're also going to show you we've already compared him to Koulibaly but we're now going to compare him to his big time his previous card because that's the that's the question I was getting asked the most time uh in the in the stream is the old version of Maldini as good as the new version or vice versa the booster gives him a little bit of a boost but yeah let's roll it man and let's see so on the left, you have the big time Maldini that they released way back when, one of the first big time cards that was absolutely insane. Both of these players have similar levels, they have similar kind of stats, they have similar player skills, they're both destroyers, they have similar play styles on the actual pitch, their player ID is pretty much identical, and you can see from left to right there that the big time tracks very, very nicely. Now these stats for the booster Maldini are already boosted up. So this is with the booster and it is with the manager boost for both of these cards, right? So his defensive awareness and tackling and his acceleration um, are all going to get a boost as well as the jumping, right? The big time card on the left. Honestly, if you if you have this big time version of Maldini, lads, unless you're spinning for somebody else in the pack and you're going to go for Bergomi, who I think is going to feature next in our channel, he's absolute beast and could be the best right back in the game currently. I do feel like this big time is so close to the booster Maldini. Plus, he's better in the air as well. He just feels more solid, you know, in the air than this new booster Maldini. Now, I've played a lot of games with Maldini across different profiles and different builds. We do have the ultimate build for this booster Maldini. But I do think that if you have this big time Maldini, to answer you very shortly, I do feel that this big time is more than enough at the moment. I do feel that there's going to be another Maldini card. I think that they'll make him kind of a very overpowered Maldini card going forward. Because extra an extra three or four levels on this booster Maldini, he would have been the best in the game by a mile, okay? So this is the build that we've actually gone for, right? It's very, very simple. You've got 10 into lower body, 5 into aerial strength, and then, of course, 13 into defending. That is going to max out pretty much all his defensive stats. The big difference between this card, right, and other cards is that mixture of speed, aggression, and defensive awareness. Most destroyers will only have high aggression, high speed and then one more stat that's really high okay such as the likes of Koulibaly who has all his stats kind of similar to Maldini's but I just feel like with Koulibaly he's slower on the ball the thing that gives Maldini a big advantage is as I said earlier if you are a ball playing type of player right or like if you're able to do the simple things right Maldini is just very slick he does have a couple of limitations but he slots into pretty much any team any formation any system and is just able to do exactly what he says on the tin, right? If you defend with other players and let Maldini be controlled by the AI, he keeps his line, he's aggressive when he needs to be, his teammate press is quite solid because of his aggression and speed, um, and you don't need to worry too much about acceleration, which still is pretty nice on Maldini, it's around 75, it's not up here, right? So, lads, let me know what you guys think of Maldini. I'm slightly disappointed with this card, right? I think it's a beast of a card, but I feel like an extra three levels would have made him onto a different level. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you are new here, welcome in. We do this every day, multiple videos a day, multiple live streams a day, and we have the crack and break down the game in a different kind of unique way. So, I will talk to you guys later.